Today we're going to be talking about admin network policy. Um, I'm Andrew Stoikis. I am a software engineer in Red Hat's office of the CTO, and this is Surya. Hey everyone, I'm Surya, and I'm also an engineer working at Red Hat on the OpenShift networking team. Yeah, so let's go over what we're going to see today. So for folks who don't know, the admin network policy API is a brand new API out of the SIG network policy API subgroup to SIG network. It's a mouthful. Um, but this is what we're going to go over today, kind of the backstory to what led up to us working to create a new API, the user stories for the uh, new API, uh, what the API implementation actually looks like, and then what's next. So what's coming next for this API and the group that's working on it. Awesome. So this is what we started with. Like this is a, not a super new problem statement. Um, admins have needed to apply network policy at a cluster scope for a long time, okay? And they've had no built-in tooling to do so. So what did uh, admins have for policy tools that were built into Kubernetes? Well, most of us know about network policy, but network policy was not designed for the admin. Right? It was designed for developers, and specifically, these are kind of the two user stories that network policy was designed for. So the first one being, as an application developer, I want to basically control what entities can or cannot talk to my application. And then as an application developer, I want to set up a multi-tiered architecture where you have fine-grained control over communication within those tiers. So. These user stories, I would say, have expanded um, in practice and today. But this is the original, straight from the mouth, from Tim Hawken and Dan Winship, who kind of were the creators of network policy. But again, it's designed for developers, not cluster admins. And, of course, it's namespaced. <laughs> so the next question, right? We said we needed policy applied to a cluster as a whole. So why don't we just go and make network policy cluster scoped? It'd be pretty easy to take the network policy API and add um, a namespace selector and say that you can apply it to all namespaces. But there's a few, reason we, a few reasons we didn't do that, okay? So network policy, the existing API, is a pretty old API, and it makes some assumptions that we aren't super wild about for admins. Specifically, one of the major ones is it uh, has an implicit isolation model. So in Kubernetes, everything is allowed to talk to everything until it is selected by a network policy. And at that point, communication is cut off. So it flips kind of the implicit allow to um, a deny, but not really explicitly. Um, another problem with network policy is it's just additive, so you can make multiple network policies and, and they're just, the behavior is additive. There aren't any explicit actions or priorities. And then one of the last ones is, this is a hotly debated topic. IP block is how we select north-south traffic with network policy. It was added after the original spec was designed, I believe, and folks have a problem with that because when we are talking about ingress mechanisms, pre and post snap, uh, becomes kind of an issue. So these are some of the reasons we decided to leave the network policy API behind and kind of forge ahead, uh, creating a new API for admins. And why should we care? I mean, um, Surya and I both have talked to customers where they have to create hundreds of identical policies across their cluster. Uh, it's, it's really laborious, it's a real big pain. And another show that goes to, uh, goes to show how important this is, is a lot of downstream um, implementations have their own versions. Um, here I've labeled three, Antrias, Ciliums, and Calicos. These are three CNIs that have their own version of a cluster scoped policy. And it's interesting, we have everything from a Cilium cluster-wide network policy, which is basically just network policy with abstracted to the cluster scope, all the way to Antria, which is a totally new API. Awesome, I'm gonna toss it over to Surya to kind of talk about some of the user stories that we first aligned on before we even started the API. Like, just remember, API design should flow from user stories. If it doesn't, something's wrong. Thank you, Andrew. Yeah, so let's look at some of the user stories that we had in mind when we designed admin network policy, the cap. 
And um, maybe looking at these will give us the motivation behind why ANP was designed the way it is, and it can help you know the when, where, how to use the ANP in you know, real life scenarios. The first story we're gonna look at is um, being able to deny traffic on a cluster wide level. So maybe as a cluster administrator, you wanna be able to say that I don't want certain set of pods or namespaces to be able to you know, talk with any other namespace. And you wanna enforce this on a cluster scope level, um, network policies allow you to do this on a more namespace level or on a more application developer um, tenant wise level. But as an admin, you want to be able to define these rules in a way that are not being overridden by other tenant owners or app developer um, in the cluster. So if you want to, for example, here, look at the diagram that we have here. So you might have like a security sensitive namespace and you want to be able to say, I don't want any namespace in the cluster to be able to talk to this namespace. And ANP allows you to define these rules in a very easy way. The second user story that we have is the opposite of the deny case, which is the allow case. You want to be able to, for example, say um, the metrics pods that are in your monitoring namespace, they should be able to scrape every namespace in the cluster to know its health. And the, the owners of those namespaces should not be able to deny the sort of traffic. So you want an ANP rule to, to be enforced on a more higher priority level that says, hey, this traffic should always be allowed, and I don't give the right to anybody else in the cluster to be able to override these. Same with, for example, ingress traffic towards the kubeDNS, which should always be allowed, right? So nobody should be able to override these, and you know, ANP, again, gives you a way to define these allow rules in a very easy way. The third user story is actually a very interesting one, and it's a bit different from the allow and the deny that you probably have seen before. It's a way for admins to be able to delegate or grant some amount of power to the developers in the cluster. So they can define rules that say, hey, if the traffic is matching the specific full namespace, or it's an ingress traffic coming from a specific set of pods in the full namespace, I don't want to do anything about it. I just want to delegate this to the net network policies that are defined for that namespace. So it's a way for admins to say, I'm going to skip all the ANP rules. No ANP will be evaluated. We'll straight go to all the NP rules that are defined for the namespace. Like as an admin, you may not be aware of all the um, details of a specific application. And maybe in that case, you just want the developers to set up the policies or enforce security rules. So that's one of the user stories that we had in mind for ANP to have some level of interaction with how network policies work so that the namespace administrators can also have a say over what should be allowed or what should not be allowed. Yeah, and this is one of those that, you know, we have network policy, it's been there, it's not going anywhere, we have to provide a mechanism to interact with it, so. Yeah. The fourth user story is a common one, which is tenant isolation. A tenant here could mean either a single namespace or a group of namespaces, but essentially you want a way to be able to say that this tenant should not be able to talk to that tenant or no tenants should be able to talk to each other should only be explicitly allowed based on the tenants um, defining rules themselves. So we saw the first user story, which is the deny. So we can use the same sort of rules to actually also deny traffic between tenants. So the final user story that I'm gonna talk about is being able to deny traffic on a cluster wide um, level in the sense that you want to secure your entire cluster. You want to have a basic default deny policy on your cluster and then be able to say that no pod should be able to talk to any other pod in the cluster or no namespace should be able to talk to any other namespace in the cluster unless explicitly allowed by the network policies or admin network policies, for example. So you want to have a way of saying, I'm, de I'm denying everything, I'm protecting my entire cluster. And then if you want to allow anything on top of it, please just go and Allow, define those explicit allow rules with a higher priority than your deny rule over here. So, so these are some of these stories that we had in mind. Um, let's go over the API implementation details and then we'll come back to how can we actually implement these user stories using ANP. Yeah, keep those in mind because they're gonna be really important. We're gonna see some YAMLs for those. So these are kind of two principles we started with um, with admin error policy and it's, keep, it's important to keep in mind. So the Admin Network Policy API, we've designed it to be extremely, extremely readable and explicit, okay? There is no implicit behavior as with network policy. Um, and for V1 Alpha 1 of this API, we're also focusing only on east-west traffic. Um, and we hope to address the north-south traffic use case in a further release. But for now, we've, we've tried to keep it simple and our user, st user stories do not mention uh, North-South yet. 
Awesome. So we implemented the user stories we already talked about with two new objects. That, that, uh, they are what we call the admin network policy API. Those objects are the admin network policy object, and the, this object is used to define rules which are not, cannot be overridden by developers, i.e. they cannot be overridden by network policy. The other object is the baseline admin network policy object, which was used to specifically satisfy use case five, where we want to flip the, use ca the um, default stance of the cluster from allow all to deny all. Um, and these can be overridden by developers using network policies. And the things we just want to constantly remind throughout this talk is our persona. Okay, so admin network policies and baseline admin network policies are defined explicitly for the system admin, while network policies, remember, are always for the developer to use. Awesome, so let's talk about some explicit parts of the new admin network policy API specific to admin network policy objects. So we have added explicit actions to this API. Uh, specifically, those are allow, deny, and pass. Okay, allow and deny kind of speaks for themselves. Pretty, pretty simple, pretty understandable. Something we don't have in network policy, but it allows us to be a lot more explicit in the API. And pass is this brand new sparkly action that there's not really any precedence for. And this is what allows us to essentially delegate traffic enforcement um, explicitly to uh, application developers. And that basically allows us to solve use case three, which we'll see again later on in these slides. Some other really great design details that came out of the development of this API were we added priorities. So pretty simple here. Most cluster admins are used to setting up firewalls with traditional ACLs. Most of those ACLs have priorities. Um, so we added it here. It just made sense. This is just an integer value from zero to 1,000. And something to remember is that lower priority values have higher precedence. Um, really important thing here, too, is that baseline admin network policies do not have priority. And that is because we envision very few of those being used. Now, if two admin network policies overlap in priority, today the behavior is in, uh, unknown. And we have not really specified what happens in the API. So the next thing we have in the API are our standard ingress and egress rules. We know those from network policy, thankfully. Um, however, nowadays, in each in ingress and egress rule, you must define at least one and at least an action. So then there's no defaulted unknown behavior that can happen if you mess up your YAML um, or if you do something else that something else wrong. We've also added a name field to these ingress and egress rules, so that's just so admins can, in the future, share rules with other users, and hopefully our developer tooling can make use of them as well. The last thing we've added for this API is a status field. Um, for V1 Alpha 1, it's just a list of conditions, but in the future, based on what implementations do, um, we might fix these conditions to a certain enum. Awesome, so we went over some uh, high, high scale uh, API design rules that came out of this, and now we're gonna talk about some YAML Surya is going to. Yeah, so um, we looked at the previous user stories that I was talking about when ANP was designed. Um, so let's look at how an admin of a policy rule would actually look like for each of those use cases. And keep in mind that these were just the basic use cases that we, hi um, that we had in mind when the API was designed. But if you have more user stories that you'd like to see or more use cases for ANP, please do reach out to us and we'll try to include them as well when we do the V1 Alpha 2 version of it. So the first story that we saw at was how to deny traffic on a cluster-wide level as an admin. And we saw, we took an example here of a security sensitive namespace and you wanna deny traffic from any other namespace into it. Um, this, is all, this is how a typical object, ANP object would look like, the YAML would look like. And you can see the kind being admin network policy. And Andrew spoke about priorities. So you can set um, priorities for each of the objects and all the rules that get defined inside this object will share the same priority. So you have to be careful what rules you define inside it because when they are of same priority, they get evaluated with the same, um, you know, at, they are evaluated at the same level. So here, in this case, you can see that the subject is something that you apply the 
um, the object on, that is the A and P rules that are defined in this object would be applied on the subject, which is defined here. A subject in this case is just a peer, so it can be a namespace, it can be a pod, it can be some set of, set, set of pods inside a namespace, any of those. So here in our case, the subject is the sensitive namespace that we care about, and that's selected using match labels, you know, fundamental we see it in a lot of objects in Kubernetes. And we define an ingress rule here that says, I want to drop any traffic that's coming towards the sensitive namespace from any other namespace in the cluster. And that's defined using namespace selectors. And we leave it as empty. And empty means all namespaces get selected by default. And the second user story that we saw, which was the opposite of the deny, the allow case, is in this case, it's a bit special because you can also, you can have different ways to express this, right? So in our case, we have taken the subject to be all namespaces in the cluster. So this is the one way that admins can say that every namespace in the cluster should always be able to accept traffic that's coming from the monitoring namespace, or every namespace in the cluster should be able to send traffic to the kubedns namespace. You could have made the monitoring namespace or the kubedns namespace as your subject here, but that would mean that you lose the fine control over defining what other namespaces can do. So in our case, we want all the um, all the other namespaces to behave this, the way we want it to, right? So a tenant owner or an application owner or an, a full namespace administrator in this case should not be able to say, hey, I don't want any traffic coming in from the monitoring namespace. They cannot say that because you have an ANP rule here that defines that you are supposed to accept traffic coming from the monitoring namespace, and that's the whole goal here. So you can see the subject here is all the namespaces, and we have an ingress rule and an egress rule that both allow traffic from the respective um, namespaces. So it's the ingress is allowed from the monitoring namespace and the egress towards kube uh, system DNS is allowed. And you can see that we can also use a combination of namespace selectors and pod selectors here to achieve what we want, kind of same as what network policies do today. Uh, the third user story, which is a special one, which where ANP interacts with NP um, in some sense, is where you have admins delegating the power to the actual app developers or the namespace owners in this case. So here you have um, traffic coming from the full namespace going towards the bar namespace um, with pods that are labeled with SVC PUB as the, um, as the match label here. And at layer four, you wanna specify TCP and the port, um, the protocol and the port. Um, to be able to be matched on that level. So um, we want to say that anything that matches this, don't evaluate ANP rules. Instead, go straight to the NP rules. So it's a way for you to essentially skip evaluating the rules on an admin network policy level and for you to just go over to the controlled rules that are defined for the network policies by the developers. So here, um, there is some sort of control that is given to the namespace owners, which is good because maybe the admins don't, don't know what to do with this kind of traffic. So in that case, they can just say, I don't know what to do with it. I'm just gonna skip to the actual app owners and what they have defined. And that's a way for the app owners to and also enforce security and have a way to, to be able to express what they want in the cluster over the ANP rules that we have. Yeah, and another really small thing to note here that didn't make it into the slides is we've totally redesigned the port selector. Um, as you can see here, we have a ports array and then a port number entry. We also have port name and port range uh, entries. It's just a little more explicit than it works with the network policy existing ports. So go check that out. And the fourth story was about tenant isolation. Um, and here we are actually displaying a special API change here, which is not there in NPs. So in ANP, we have a way to select peers based on labels. So you have not same labels that we're defining here. So let's say that we have two tenants, foo and bar, and each of these tenants have labels with the key tenant, and the value can either be foo or bar respectively. And we have match expressions that select all the tenants using the key value tenant. So if that exists, then all the namespaces which belong to those tenants get selected. And then you wanna apply an ingress rule that says deny traffic or drop traffic that's coming from other tenants. So in this case, what we have is a not same label so what it essentially does is it goes over all the namespaces, it checks for the labels, and then it sees if the value of the label with the key tenant is the same as what is defined for the subject. So in our case, let's say the subject is tenant foo that, that gets selected, and it has, a, it's a, it has a label with the key tenant and the value foo, but then now when you evaluate the ingress rule over here, we are saying don't allow traffic unless it's from tenant foo. So if it's tenant bar or any other tenant, we don't allow. So. Yeah, and I really like this, this policy because it allows us to do a lot with a little amount of YAML. So yeah. that's what we were going for. 
And the final story that we had in mind, which was for the baseline admin network policy that Andrew talked about, it's the, the BANP is the last to get evaluated. So first you have the ANP and then the network policies and then the BANP. And here when you say that you don't want any pod to, talk, to be able to talk to each other or any namespace for that matter, you can just say select all namespaces and then have this baseline rule that says I am denying traffic on an intra-cluster level. No east-west traffic is allowed with each other unless you are defining allow rules on top of it. So as you can notice, there is no priority for baseline admin network policy, and we don't expect too many objects or rules under this constraint, for example. Like, this is one of the main use cases that we have where you want to be able to do a default deny. And you can see that the ingress action here would be a drop, and uh, the from is any other namespace, right, in the whole cluster, so. Yeah, awesome. Okay, thanks, Surya. So what comes next? We talked about this really new fun API. A lot of work went into this, so thanks to everyone in the community that helped along the way. Today, right now, you can't try this out. There are no implementations. It's, you know, we need folks like you to come in and start writing implementations. Um, but let's kind of look at what our next plans are. Uh, as part of this API, we really, in the KEP and in other places, talked about developer tooling over and over and over again. We want an admin to be able to run a single command and understand the security state of their cluster at a high level. And we want that to be in tree. So maybe kind of think kubectl describe, except with more fluffs and for admin network policy. Um, we also want to add conformance testing. This is a little tricky because this API follows what Gateway API has done and it lives fully out of tree, okay? So we actually have brought in a tool that a, a con fellow contributor wrote called Cyclonus, which does conformance testing for network policy. And our plan is to use that for admin network policy as well. We are also fostering implementation. So far, Red Hat, VMware, and Google all have kind of bought in, and that's for Antria, Oven Kubernetes, and Cilium. And then we also have future plans to add more features to this API and specifically north south traffic control. I'm sure that one's going to come up and we're going to have to redesign IP block. So we need help. We need opinions. Um, we're really excited about it and ready to get the ball rolling. Um, this is a QR code for our website. Everything you've seen here today is pretty much mirrored on our website, and I will share these slides out. Um, as I said, we need help. So come get involved come get involved in our repo and yeah thanks so much for coming today and love to take some questions with the time we have left any questions oh yeah there's a there's a mic for you let me see hey so um i'm just Looking at this, and this looks really exciting, uh, and also seems to overlap substantially with our needs in the Gateway API Mesh Working Group for uh, East-West uh, service authorization policy. So, yeah, definitely just interested in working and kind of connecting with you on this to see if we can like address a shared need with this because this looks really cool so thanks <laughs> yeah no thanks so much for reaching out and we have meetings every other monday it's the sig network policy api subgroup the <laughs> sig network you can find more information right under the sig network meeting details so that's can't wait to work with y'all yeah and we'll be here for the rest of the weeks so if you have yeah. uh, just reach out to us if you want to talk or if there are ideas so anything else i think we're right on time anyway so Cool. Well, hey, thanks for coming, everyone. Really appreciate it. And yeah, see you next time. Thank you.